to the latest installment of Lessons with Laura. If you're new here, my name is Laura Ingalls Gunn. This video is one of two in a series that covers the making of Caroline Ingalls' black and white dress. In the first video, I talked about the historical timeline as well as some of the inspiration that I came across in my research. We also did a reading of the dress as described by Laura Ingalls Wilder from the book On the Banks of Plum Creek and it's chapter 24 titled Going to Church If You'd Like to Catch Up. And I hope you'll enjoy coming along this journey and journey it definitely was. I thought that this dress had me beat on a couple of occasions and I definitely shared my frustrations, as you'll see in some of the following uh, segments. But I persevered and dug deep into that Ingalls spirit, and I hope you enjoy the finished footage. It was a joy to create. I'm currently cutting out this front bodice piece. The pattern maker recommends a 51 inch wide fabric. Um, as I mentioned in last week's video, my fabric is 36 inches across. It's a vintage fabric um, from at least the 60s, if not earlier. So the bottom of this bodice piece really flares out quite a bit, and I didn't have enough fabric, so I've pieced it. And I pieced it using... French seams, so there's no ragged edges on the seams, and that gives me the extra fabric I need. Um, the pattern's busy enough that I think when all is said and done, you won't be able to tell because of all the poofs and shearings. So hopefully, this will be okay. Um, piecing fabric is definitely historically accurate. Hi friends, I am coming to you right now <sighs> pretty frustrated. Um, I think if you speak with any sewist who is working on a multi-layered advanced level sewing project, <laughs> there comes a point in the project where you just kind of want to crumple it up, throw it in the corner, walk away, and there might even come a point where you just want to set the thing on fire. I have been there in both places during this project. Now, I knew this, is, this was going to be a difficult project. Um, there's a website called sewingpatternreview.com and you can go in and type the brand name and the pattern number. And sewists from all over the world who have already sewn that pattern um, leave reviews. You know, this is a great pattern. Um, this pattern, the pieces don't line up, um, so on and so forth. So I knew from reading reviews about the pattern that the pattern itself is actually really good. Um, the pieces all fit together beautifully. Where the difficulty lies is in the instruction portion. Um, it, it's a wonderful pattern, it, and I will get there. <laughs> Uh, but the instructions are very lacking, and, and several other people have, have said that as well. The pattern maker, English is not her first language. She is from Germany. And having lived in Germany myself and trying to learn that language, you know, things get lost in translation. I also tend to be a very visual learner, and there are a few line drawings, but no photographs of this process. And this is 
a pattern that's based on a historical garment where they used a different type of construction method to create their garments. So it, it's, been, it's been a learning curve. Um, and then of course, because I wanted to add the tiny <laughs> crocheted him at the collar that the book talks about and at the sleeves, you know, that's very detailed work. And the back with its poofs and shearings, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. It, it, it is something. Um, so I, I walked away from working on the bodice for a little bit. And you know, any well-dressed lady, when she goes out, she's gonna have some type of bag with her. So you saw me cutting this out. And this was just from my scrap bag. It was from a Edwardian dress that I had um, sewed for a black and white tee last year and I had leftover scraps and my friend Michelle had these beautiful appliques that I then secured it to the silk um, with sequins and it's it's just really lovely so that'll be a, a pretty little reticule to carry when I go to do this photo shoot and by the same token um, a woman would have had her head covered in some manner of hat or bonnet and so I had looked um, at some 1870s styled hats and again on my Pinterest board which I'll link below there are several examples that I based my hat creation on and this is it. So it's it's kind of a tilt hat. It comes this way. Of course, I'll have my hair up and it'll it'll sit like this, you know, which was the fashion. And this was all things that I had in my stash. I didn't buy anything new. This hat actually used to be green with a white trim and I dyed it and you know just some fabric flowers and various uh, ribbons that i had around the house so i'm i'm really happy with how my hat turned out for this project so i'm almost done with this bodice i have to sew on 24 buttons up the front of it and add a ruffle along the bottom of it. So I'm looking at probably about four more hours of work. Um, I've already wildly exceeded 40 hours for this project. Um, but let me show you what uh, today's frustration is. Um, in wanting to just take a break from the bodice, I started working on the skirt. And the, the skirt is actually goes together beautifully because I've made several historical skirts and they're all pretty much the same formula. You know, the gores of the skirt, meaning the sections of the skirt, might be a little bit different or wider, more narrow, but, um, Skirts go together fairly easy, and so it, it was not the pattern at all. Um, I went after I spent hours sewing the hem ruffles, and I attached it, and I went to start adding on some of the trim that holds the ruffle in place. I was like, I don't like this fabric with the bodice. It overpowers the whole look because you really want the bodice to be the focal point. It is the star of the show. And I am specifically not showing you 
the bodice because I, I want it to be a surprise, but the back with its poofs and shirrings is just so beautiful. And so that's really what you want your focus to be on um, because that is what Laura wrote about. And, oh my goodness, you guys. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm just gonna lower the camera and, and show you. This is the hem area of the skirt. And, you know, again, there's going to be a ruffle along the bottom of this bodice and you know I have made the belt and there was going to be some other gingham trim but I was just looking at this and I'm like I do not like that gingham fabric it is too visually strong like your eye immediately goes there and does not want to move it does not want to move up to take in this bodice. It's just too strong and intense of a color. And this skirt, you know, because of the ruffled hem, we're, we're talking six or seven hours to make this skirt. I'm really frustrated. So I'm looking at the skirt and it, it has to be remade in a different fabric, in a coordinating fabric that enhances, not detracts. And you know, I, I, the belt has to be remade to match the skirt. And so it's like oh, more fabric. Um, more time, certainly. You know, you're talking another seven hours, eight, because by the time you also have to cut out the pattern pieces. So, oh, I just want to walk away. I, I, and then I, I start thinking about Caroline, and she is building a log cabin with her husband on the prairie in Kansas and a log falls on her foot and more than likely she broke something and she didn't give up and oh, do I even want to consider the long winter and she is furiously twisting hay so that she and her family don't freeze to death. She refused to give up. I mean, those are just two examples of where Caroline is so inspirational. And, and I do, I, I get emotional thinking about that. And so, me cutting some fabric and sewing a fabric so that I can really try and do a dress that I'm sewing in her honor justice. That's nothing. I can do it. So I am getting up my Ingalls gumption and I'm refusing to give up. And my husband is waiting in the other room. We're gonna go to the fabric store. I already know what the fabric is that I'm going to be pairing with this. And I think it'll be beautiful. <laughs> oh, but yes, it's been, it's been a journey.
Thank you so much for joining me on this latest installment of Lessons with Laura. You can find previous videos linked down below in the description box. And I am excited to announce that this year's holiday theme is going to be titled Prairie Wonderland, a homespun holiday. And all of the crafts and recipes and readings will come from those magical and sometimes scary winter scenes that Laura Ingalls Wilder wrote about so many years ago. If you'd like to be notified of upcoming videos, just hit the subscribe button that is located in the corner of this video. And thank you, as always, for any thumbs up or comments that you leave. I really appreciate it. You can also find me on Instagram as well as on my website. Have a wonderful day.